Hello everybody, Andy here again. But this is another one of those videos, not really planned as such, a sort of follow up to the one I did yesterday about the US presidential election. Oh, I was so excited about it. I did say that I might do a follow up video. Originally, my only idea was to do a follow up video if Barack Obama hadn't been elected and maybe some of the reasons behind that. But the, the video I did yesterday got a great response from it and I've, I've had it, just been having an email conversation with someone who said, oh, I would like to hear your views. So I've, I've watched Barack Obama's, the full sort of 17 minute speech and very inspirational it was. So I wanted to just sort of talk a bit about that, I thought, once again, from a Brit's point of view. And some of the comments I got on the original video, I was quite surprised as I put it out there, as I said, very quickly, didn't know how it would be rea reacted to and what, what, you know, what the reaction would be to it. And I was very surprised and very very sort of uh, pleased by some of the, the thoughts and some of the, the comments that came out of it. So I, I, a great day, I think. It's the result I would have liked, I suppose, if to be perfectly honest. And I think it's the result that a lot of the world wanted to see. One of the reasons behind that, you watch that sort of speech and you can see how Barack Obama can inspire people. It's a 17 minute speech. It doesn't look as though he's sort of reading from notes. Um, it seems to be more or less sort of ad-libbing. I'm sure it was partially planned beforehand. And as I said to someone in an email earlier on, what a great vlogger that man would be. <laughs> Maybe we can get him on it. Maybe he posted his speech as a response to this, who knows. But very inspirational, and you see the crowds, and, and you see the inclusive nature, whether it be the sort of the ethnic minority groups, whether it be the, the ages of the people in, in the crowds, you know, obviously of all sexes and everything like that. It's, it's an inclusive thing, and I think that's something that is going to come out of this. One of the sort of the main things that's going to come out of this is the inclusiveness now. Maybe people in America feel after that sort of apathy, maybe that their votes didn't count. We've seen it overnight that votes do count now. You know, all these states that have changed sort of sides, should we say. They've gone from red to blue. The Floridas, the, the Virginia, or, uh, um, Ohio, Pennsylvania, I think some of them. Um, so they've, they've changed colour now. And maybe like has happened in other elections over here in the UK. Once that happens, it takes a long time for them to turn back. And some of the margins that the, that's it's been they've changed by are quite phenomenal when you hear what the, the the sort of percentages were back in 2004 i think it was for the for the last presidential election so big changes i mean i know barack obama spoke about change a lot and what does that change mean i think the change is in the people maybe it's the people that have now decided to change it's time for a change yes i know the last eight years and i don't want to criticize george bush and all that sort of thing but oh, you only have to listen to what a lot of the people have said people need to see something a bit different i feel a bit sorry in some ways for john mccain um i feel he's, he's a good man and i think he may well have made a pretty decent president on his own but there were uh, lots of other issues and uh, um, I watched something on the BBC earlier on, actually, and they were talking about the way that this, the inclusive nature of, sort of Barack Obama's campaign and what might follow is that in the past, people maybe have not wanted, especially in the last eight years, have not wanted to get involved particularly with the George Bush presidency, may not want to be associated with it. And a lot of that, that cuts across the country as well, I know. I know of people in comments to the video that I made yesterday and, and talking to people in America via emails and all that sort of thing. That a lot of people were ashamed to be Americans, ashamed to have George Bush as their president. They've got their reasons for that, so I'm not going to go into that. But now I think you're going to see within the government or the administration that he's going to put together, you might see names in there that want to get involved. They can see this, there's there's hope. It's, uh, I don't know what it is. It's sort of excitement, I suppose, and that, that youthful energy that I think he gives gives to this. He Barack Obama, I believe, was only about two years old when um, Martin Luther King made his "I Have a Dream" speech, and I know that's been widely quoted. But we've now, 45 years later, after that sort of speech, with about you know the. Martin Luther King wanted his children to grow up and be thought about not because of the colour of their skin but because of the content of their character. That 45 years has flown by and it's happened now, no, November the 4th, 2008, a momentous day for that. A big sea change, a big watershed, I think, in American politics and American life and possibly across the world because these, these ripples will work across uh, America, as I said before, a big, very powerful country, a big very powerful person in the president and 
what they what, now what happened in America usually sort of reports its way across the world for good or bad, <laughs> and and that may well happen. There's still lots of places in the world that could see that change and need to see that change, and maybe they will see what's happened in America and they will think, oh, well, if they can do it over there, they they want to see that change. Maybe they want to get over that sort of racial barrier because I don't think anybody really thought Martin Luther King, probably even himself, even possibly Barack Obama, thought 20 odd months ago that he would be standing there last night in Chicago, in a park where I was only a month ago. It wouldn't have been great to have been there last night. And uh, to sort of think to himself, you know, I could be the first African-American president of the United States. It's, it's A lot has changed very, very quickly, I think. That last year in America has changed a lot, and I think this is going to snowball. I think this is going to change. One thing, as I said, about the inclusive nature of the country, but I think the inclusive nature of some of the people that he may get into, into his administration, into his government, and which will help. People will want to be involved rather than people maybe trying to sort of edge away very, very slightly. But something that I've noticed in the past, especially once again over the last eight years, is the way that the country, I feel, I mean, I could be completely wrong. This is the point of these videos. I'm looking at it from an outsider's point of view is that America sort of went inward, it became very insular, it became very inward looking. There was that whole thing about George Bush when he was elected and I don't think he had a passport, or he'd never been abroad or he'd only been to Mexico or something like that. That set a tone, I think, for what other people outside of America thought about America. A lot of people, people I don't think people hate America. They, they, we've always look, looked to America, we've always liked America, but for some reason we sort of turned away from it and sort of shunned it and now hopefully with a new president with this the, the new dawn if you want to call it that and the way that the, the acceptance speech the campaign has been run this is a young man who was i think born outside of the country african-american you know and sort of white white uh, mother black father a completely different person as he said in this speech someone who's come to america and live the American dream, prove what the American dream is all about. Someone from those humble beginnings, the first black man to become a president of the United States. If it can happen to him, it can happen to anybody. And hopefully this will make him and everybody else look outwards again. I know lots of Americans who want to look outwards, but it's a big country, it's a very diverse country, but sometimes you do need to look outside of your boundaries to learn your borders, to actually learn about the rest of the world. The rest of the world does matter. It's very, very influential. It's very easy to look inward and become distracted by your own life. And I totally understand that you become wrapped up in your own life, but the whole world is important. You're the sort of the leader of the free world or whatever the, the expression is. And I've said a very, very powerful position is the president of the United States. And people look up to that. And hopefully they will look up to that in the future for the right reasons because you're looking outwards, you're being inclusive within your own country, but you're inclusive across the world as well. And I think that's something that will make a big difference and something that will be welcomed across the world. And I think that's the reason that people in my country, across Europe, across the world, have taken such an interest in this. There's sort of new hope there. There's new life breathed into politics, maybe. Uh, maybe to get people involved in politics across the world as well, get sort of some youthful people. And that's what you want in, in politics nowadays. We need new people, we need new blood in there to inspire the young, to inspire the ethnic minorities, to get them out there to vote, to get that sort of enthusiasm in there. And when that enthusiasm gets there, as we've seen, 64% of the American population will come out and vote, record numbers. So you know, get the right person and the rest will follow. So I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing what's going to happen in the future. I think there's great, great times ahead. Not everyone's going to like it, but, you know, as I said, it's going to be an inclusive presidency, but an outward looking one. And I think that's one of the things from an outside perspective, that's the biggest thing of all, that change of looking outward and looking at the rest of the world and taking notice of that as well. Anyway, I've said enough. <laughs> Uh, whether I should be back with another one of these vlogs. Well, I'm very interested to know what anybody thinks of my opinion or any other sort of non-American opinion. Anyway, thanks for your time. I'll speak to you again soon. Goodbye.